who is uh, providing uh, the posting of the colors this morning. Uh, uniform members, please stand at attention. All others, please remove your hats. Go on, Hudson, Hut! Carry Hut! Forward, Hut! States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Carrot, Thank you to the Junior ROTC uh, for the presentation present of the colors this morning. Uh, before we get started in earnest, I'd like to first offer some introductions uh, most of you are familiar with, and uh, joining us here this morning is uh, Councilman Lazelle from the uh, City of Prescott Mayor and Council's uh, office. Uh, also with us is Deputy City Manager Allison Zelm and Pete Gordon with the United States Power Service. Uh, for those that don't know you, know me, know me. Uh, uh, I'm Dennis Light, I'm the Fire Chief with the City of Prescott. Uh, before we get started too much, I'd like to, uh, first off, I think everybody understands the significance of today's event. Uh, Prescott has a uh, immediate touching of this event. Uh, last year, uh, June 30th of 2013, we experienced our own tragedy. However, uh, the tragedy that for, uh, came before that was the one on 9-11 back in uh, 2001. And uh, much like high school, everybody happens to remember the highlights and the lowlights of their lives. Uh, high school, most everybody can tell you where they were, what they did, and what they had the privilege of enjoying through that life. And then we also recall tragedy. And uh, most of us uh, that are old enough to remember, uh, we have some young folks out in the audience that weren't even around yet. But I think uh, the criticality and flat of uh, what happened in 9-11 is very important to remember. And today we have that opportunity in the form of a survivor tree. And with that, I'd like to introduce uh, Chief Daryl Willis, who will provide us some dedication remarks for the uh, hair tree that is, you see behind us. Daryl. Thank you, Chief. Uh, if you haven't seen it, that's the tree. It was planted at about uh, 8.30 this morning. And uh, it came all the way from New York City uh, uh, via air to Flagstaff and the, uh, uh, we got an arborist here from uh, Bartlett to help us uh, dedicate it, or not necessarily dedicate it, but uh, uh, plant it correctly and giving us advice so this, will, this tree will survive. So it's a calorie tri pear tree, and it, uh, it was planted earlier this morning. It's a seedling from a very historical tree. The original survivor tree was one of numerous trees that surrounded the iconic World Trade Center Plaza built uh, in, in between 1966 and 1987 in Lower Manhattan, New York City. On September 11, 2001, the World Trade Center Twin Towers was destroyed in the largest foreign attack on U.S. soil. The destruction filled the 16-acre complex with over 3 billion pounds of debris. Thousands of workers and volunteers from across the country flocked to the site to help with the rescue and recovery efforts. Conditions at the site, which came to be revered as Ground Zero, were difficult and bleak. Eighteen individuals emerged and were pulled from the refuge alive by the afternoon of September 12, 2001. As the days and weeks wore on, it became clear that more survivors would not be found. Amidst the fiery record, rescue and recovery workers were surprised to discover the remnants of a few trees from the World Trade Center. One tree that was identified had been severely burned, a number of its limbs were reduced to stumps, 
and the bark was charred from the intense fires at the side. Yet somehow, it continued to sprout leaves from beneath the rubble. Sensing the tree's struggle for survival, and seeing how it bolstered the spirits of the recovery workers, a coordinated removal of the tree and its replanting happened on Veterans Day 2001 at a Bronx nursery with uh, the New York City Parks and Recreation folks dedicating themselves to keeping the tree alive. The transplanted tree slowly took root. Years passed and the story of this damaged tree remained relatively unknown. It wasn't until 2007 that the tree story began to unfold. A project manager at the 9-11 Memorial and Museum Project uh, the, the and museum project began a process to bring the tree back to the memorial site. When it was removed, the survivor tree stood eight feet tall. In 2007, it was 30 feet tall. Dramatic new growth was visible. The older bark carried the remainder, reminder of the attack, while the new growth was very visible and divided it, the before 9-11 circumstances and the after 9-11 circumstances. On a chilly December day in 2010, the survivor tree was replanted at the World Trade Center Memorial, which was deep into reconstruction. Mayor of New York City, Bloomberg, suggested collecting seeds and growing saplings from them for a new generation of trees. In this way, the descendants of the survivor tree would be able to live on into the future. The survivor tree has become a symbol of resilience and renewal and emblem of rebirth at the World Trade Center. The 9-11 Memorial Survivor Tree Seedling Program has developed a program whereby three communities annually will receive one of these seedlings. The memorial will donate a seedling to three communities that have overcome tragedy. These communities represent the spirit of the survivor tree, and their tree will serve as an inspirational landmark conveying, conveying resiliency and hope within the community, just as the survivor tree does at the memorial. Three communities have suffered tragedies during the previous year, were the first to receive those inaugural trees. Prescott was one of those. Three more communities are uh, receiving the trees today. We received the tree after losing 19 of our Granite Mountain hotshots in the Yarnell Hill wildfire June 30th. It's very fitting and a great honor to be able to plant one of the survivor saplings today. So resiliency, renewal, and hope within the Prescott community after the tragic loss of the Granite Mountain hotshot crew, as well as other disasters, and the city of New York are giving back to the cities across the United States. This is a very positive inspiration to me, and I, I'm thankful to be a part of it. Thank you, Daryl. Uh, you know, as we remember, there's been a lot of folks involved in uh, the events since 9-11. I think, uh, you know, looking forward to our active duty and reserve military, our public safety personnel. But most importantly, uh, through all this, is the community support that comes out each and every day. Uh, it's never more prevalent than my, on my arrival here on June 16th. Uh, it continues today and for the foreseeable future. And with that, I'd like to offer the opportunity for uh, Councilman Lozell to say a few words and uh, offer a commentary. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Chief Light, Chief Lewis, thank you on behalf of Council for having us here. Uh, I admit I had nothing prepared, but, you know, over the past year plus, We've seen an uh, outpouring from the community, the state, the country. And you wish, it's like, it's like being on an organ transplant list. You wish you weren't on it. You just wish you had healthy organs. You wish the hot shots were there or back with us. But since they can't, we have the support, like this statue, like this tree, and so much more that's come to our community. And I say thank you. Thank you, sir. And uh, with that, uh, please keep everybody's families in mind. Uh, oftentimes we leave for tours of duty and uh, you never know what the future may bring. Uh, we do our darndest to make sure that families return safely. Uh, you know, much like history, history is a good indicator of the future, both good and bad. 
we want to work to capitalize and on the good, yet we owe it to ourselves, this community, and the men and women that come before us to honor the past as well. And with that, that concludes our uh, event for this morning. Thank you very much to the family, the extended family, and the community president for joining us this morning. You owe yourself a round of applause. Thank you. Yeah, well, I don't want it.